This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Good morning, Grant. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Happy uh, Happy New Year, man. we got the pitchers and catchers reporting for spring training across the uh, Major League Baseball landscape. You celebrate that like New Year's the same way that I do? Well, I read something about the second day yesterday, and it, it kind of sneaked up. I didn't realize they were already doing that. So, you know, uh, but we went to, you were talking about Valentine's Day. Uh, my wife and I went to see Moulin Rouge last night at the Walls and Arts Center. It just took tremendous energy in that uh, production. So if anybody uh, gets a chance, it's still on a few more times this week. Well, that sounds like fun. That sounds like a nice Valentine's Day date. So it's like a musical uh, Broadway. It's not the movie. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. I got you. It's not the one yeah, that uh, they they did what fifteen years ago with the music. It's the, it's the it's like yeah, the stage production Nicole version Kidman, of the movie. Right. Yeah, Christina yeah. Aguilera, something like that, and, and that that crew. Yeah. Yeah, and at the end they had the the streamers and uh, like confetti came up and these little hearts, you know, came wafted right up right up there to the first seat in the balcony. So that's where we sat. It's pretty cool. Heck of a lot of it sounds like a heck of a lot of fun, man. I actually still have not seen the movie, so I don't know if I need to see one or the other first. Uh, Grant, we've got a lot going on in Arkansas Razorback Athletics Land now. You got the baseball season starting on Friday. Softball already is five and zero. Gymnastics is in full swing. Both men's and women's basketball are in the home stretch. We're having open tryouts for football, which feels different than usual. Do you remember open tryouts for football anytime recently? Because I can't. Matt can't either. Yeah, I think uh, maybe they've had them a few times, just but not publicized like this, uh, like you said, Matt. You know, and, and uh, that's interesting. I mean, I wonder if they'll if they'll find a twelfth man deal and find some player. You know, people used to make a big deal out of uh, when they went and got John Rutledge off the intramural field to play quarterback when the when the Razorbacks got three quarterbacks hurt in one game. But the, the less publicized thing about that was he, he had been with the program. He had played a few years and then, you know, uh, decided not to play. And he was, he was playing intramural football. But, you know, he knew the system and everything. And they went back, got him, and I uh, think used him a little bit. Yeah, he had to play. I would think I was a sophomore or a junior in high school. I remember, I remember when that happened. But yeah, you're right. He was. He it wasn't like they just went and got him. He he had been right. practicing. Yeah. He was he was he was halfway talented. But before we get into a little bit uh, of basketball and some other things, I do want to get your thoughts on the Super Bowl. Uh, what impressed you the most, Matt? I thought that the that the play uh, when. Uh, Hertz did his Garrel Yaprimian imitation and, and gave him a touchdown. With, I mean, not to be unkind, but that play was kind of the ball game. Yeah. As it turned out. I mean, as good as good a game as he played, and he played well. And you could see on that last pass that he didn't have the arm strength, you know, the shoulder strength. But he played great. It was a great ball game. Just, uh, you know, for a long time the Super Bowl was a Super Bowl, and people talked about it was never a great game. It seems like most of them are pretty good now. You know, most of them are exciting. And uh, uh, one note with uh, with Patrick Mahomes, you know, John David Lindsay reminded me yesterday that his father, uh, Pat Mahomes, and and Phil, you'll remember this, uh, was a major league pitcher. He had a forty two and thirty nine record. I, I looked him up. He uh, uh, he's from Bryan, Texas, and he would be, he was 6'4", 212. Uh, he'd be 52 years old now, and he, 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 uh, he pitched for Minnesota, Boston, New York Yankees, Texas. Um, his last year was with the Pirates in 03. Phil, do you, me- do you remember him? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're all, ki- they're all kinds of Major League veterans that close out their career with one last year with the Pirates because <laughs> it's the only team that will sign them. They got to find nine guys, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, he had a, you got to have a pitching his, staff, right? You got to get a warm body here, or there. That's yeah. I remember yeah, watching well, he, Patrick Pat Mahomes pitch. He was good. I think he might have closed career, for the Twins uh, for a year or two. Yeah, his career ERA though was five point four seven, but in nineteen ninety nine he was eight and zero with the New York Yankees with a three point six eight earned run average. But the more interesting thing about him was that. Um, he signed with Ar- He was going to play basketball at Arkansas with the Mayberry Day Oliver Miller uh, group, but Pat he chose base- 
Yes, but he chose <laughs> baseball instead. So he, he was, I guess, that close to uh, being a Razorback basketball player. It runs. It's in the blood. I mean, he they're they're athletes. You can see how how he's out there running around. I mean, just man, I it, Grant, my the guy that and maybe this is just the receiver in me, but AJ Brown impressed me the most. I mean, that dude uh, was a man out there, and and you and you know why now when J- Jalen Hurts is throwing the ball up, he's throwing it in that direction because you know it, it's not going to be intercepted. Well, and it was, you know, Mahomes only passed for, what was it, 188 or 184 or something, but they were all pretty effective yards. You know, he, d- he did what uh, he had to do there. And, I, I mean, I, you all probably t- – did you talk Monday about the, the call and whether it should have been uh, called or not, the, the penalty there at the end? And I did read that the uh, player they called it on said – he he basically said, "Yeah, I held him." You know, he like he wasn't as he wasn't as disturbed about it as a lot of fans were. Matt, how often is there holding that's not called on 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 any play in the NFL? Outside, you know, outside the line of scrimmage, it's a little bit easier to see, I guess. You know, they used they to have that. There's holding on like every play, and they used to have that that three yard five yard rule where they could get your hands on them because that was in the first five yards. I mean, it was right there in the line of scrimmage. The thing you want well, you know, is you want them to get it right, but you want them to be consistent. You just want to know how we're calling it all and call it the same way all game. Yeah, and that Pereira, who I think does a great job with everything, you know, at first he said, well, I, he said, I think when you look at this, you're going to see the holding. But then I noticed he didn't re- never said anything again after the replay. So It was soft. Uh, I thought it was soft. But, yeah. I mean, it was the right call. But it was, I mean, it's a little soft. It, it was a great game. It, it, it was a tug. It was a jersey tug. I mean, it wasn't. Like, I don't think you know, he catches the ball. He, I don't think he catches the ball if, if even if he doesn't tug him. But you know, I mean, by the letter of the law, it's it was a foul. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, and I, I don't know how you guys are on if something, you know, if you call it in the first quarter, then you call it in the fourth quarter, or when it comes down to like a lot of times, your coaches say, well, in that situation, you don't call that, you know. I, I tell you when I what I said to Phil was I, I took correlated it to as a as an umpire calling balls and strikes. It's like all of a sudden in the ninth inning or eighth inning with it's a three two count and you're calling this low slider a a, a strike all day and then you call it a ball or the vice versa whatever you're doing. It's like just just be consistent is what you want. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, a couple of other notes by the way with you mentioned a lot of Razorback stuff, uh, Phil. Um, Stacy Lewis is going to be the Solheim Cup captain for two years. You see that she, you know, she's going overseas this year to do it, and then when they come back to the United States next year, she'll do it again. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, there's this note, and Eric Musselman mentioned this the other night on his radio show. Stanley Amude uh, has a 10-day contract with the Detroit Pistons. So add him to the list of uh, former Razorbacks. In the NBA, uh, the Pistons are 16 and 43 playing in Boston tonight. I mean, maybe there's a chance, Matt, for uh, him to get in at the end of a maybe when they're down 25 points or something. I don't know. Sometimes these like guys. The Moodet, end, they... I like the Mude at Arkansas. I guess I'd be surprised if he sticks in the NBA, but you get a 10 day well, contract, might get a chance to show what you can do. Did maybe. he have any years of eligibility left at Arkansas, or was that? His... I don't think he did. Yeah. He was four years at South Dakota. Oh, okay, South Dakota transferred State. in for which a year. one of those. No, he's a little yeah. stud. Yeah. Well, his first year at uh, South Dakota, he, he said he was known for holding the chairs for the starters. In fact, uh, you know, Eric said he he was not highly recruited. So a guy like that, I mean, not very highly recruited guys get a chance at the NBA. Yeah, they kind of know NBA when you're about 14, 15 years old. They kind of know about the seven guys. There's, And that's the thing about these first-round picks we got into a little bit. There's only 12 guys a year that are going to make rosters and get in play. So, these, I mean, being drafted 28th means you're not going to be on the team. Most well, how of the about time. a couple of second-rounders from Arkansas the past few years that are making – Making a name it's for a themselves journey. now at Oklahoma City. You yeah. Know, Isaiah Joe, Jalen Williams, both second round picks. And, you know, I mean, the playing time has come slowly for them, but it's there now. And, I mean, they're giving reason to get back on the court game after game. You don't see too, too many D- DNPs for those guys any longer. Yeah. And when you do, and you another. think, like, why did that even happen? Because Zay leads the NBA in three point percentage. And Jalen Williams, I mean, this is, he is such an he's a, he's a good big yeah. basketball player. Mm-hmm. So smart. I think he's leading in uh, in field goal percentage. Of course, it'd be fewer attempts probably, but uh, yeah. But and, and that's a last place team, but they're not that far out of it. So, how uh, tall is Jalen Williams, uh, Grant? Because he, six, he 
pinned, right? He reminds me a little bit of Jokic, you know, the, the center from Denver, like when you're talking about intelligent, can pass the ball, can move. Now, I'm not saying he's that good, but that's kind of his mold. That, that You know, Arbita Sabonis, one of those guys that can kind of do a little bit of everything out there, just crafty with, with the ball. Takes charges, a great, great yeah. passer. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Grant, the uh, pitching rotation was announced by Dave Van Horn earlier today. There, there aren't any surprises, um, you know, with Hagen and then McIntyre and then Hunter Holland. Uh, I, I, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming Jackson Wiggins would have been penciled in for the Friday. Uh, but I like having a couple of lefties in the starting rotation. And you can see Dave wanted them split, you know, to have uh, Hagen on a Friday, Holland on a Saturday, or pardon me, on a Sunday, and uh, McIntyre kind of the... Uh, the, uh, the cream filling is the right-hander in between the left-hander Oreo sandwich. I like how this rotation shakes out. I wonder, though, you know, there, there are a lot of options still to start a game. Brady Tiger would be one of them. Uh, Austin Ledbetter, uh, potentially another one. There are other guys, too. I just wonder, I think this rotation can hold, uh, but there are options in case somebody in a couple of months, you know, needs needs a week off. Yeah, and that's interesting when... when uh, uh, Dave talked about this might be his deepest pitching staff. And, of course, not long after that, you you lose one of the, as you said, maybe a Friday night starter. Wiggins, you know, he had like a six ERA last year, but he they said that he had, he had really gotten a lot of control and was and was mastering several pitches. So uh, that's a loss. I mean, it kind of, you know, it's uh, less leeway, I guess. But you're right. I mean, we were kind of counting up seven or eight guys that were potential uh, weekend starters. Are you signing up for Flow Sports? Or are you just going to be listening this weekend, or are you maybe I don't know? There's so much to watch. I mean, you could get your eyes on on softball. You get uh, men's basketball Saturday, women's basketball Sunday. Take your pick. So, what is it that you'll be watching closely? Uh, I haven't even got past tonight too much. You know, about, I've just been thinking about this game a lot, and and Nick Smith and people talking about you know did it mess up the chemistry when he came in and so forth. And Matt, I know you've been really high on on Nick Smith. Uh, and and especially in, in three, four games, four or five games when he gets back into things. Uh, I thought it did maybe affect a couple of the other guys. Mm-hmm. That's uh, expected, Matt, when, though, right? Like, it's kind yeah. of, yeah. When, when you played, uh, did you have a sense that it might have affected somebody else's spot on the team? You know, like, were there other guys that didn't I wasn't that time? good. I, I, You know, so when I got in, it, it took me, it, it, you know, it took me three weeks before I kind of got my playing time and kind of got moved in. But we weren't that we weren't that good, Grant. I think we, we were uh, below 500 both years I played. That's the, really the reason I got to play is because we, we, were, we just weren't that good. Well, this A&M team was awful in pre-conference, and they're great now. And, they, you know, tonight that you got Alabama-Tennessee. Uh, and, by the way, I, I've got Tennessee winning that one by 20 points uh, just from <laughs> – you know, I heard Clay say yesterday about the – he thought uh, Mississippi State would be Kentucky by 20. I think uh, – so by the time the game starts, A&M could be looking at moving within one game of the, of the lead. But I think the Razorbacks are going to play well. Uh, whether it's a win tonight, I don't know. But uh, last time, you know, A and M had that travel nightmare, and uh, I think uh, what was it? Um, uh, Coleman, I think, went for eighteen and fifteen. But we're gonna, you know, Eric knows that they're gonna change what they do, and he's gonna change what he does, and it should be pretty interesting. I, I would start. I'd start Nick Smith. I, I, I wonder what lineup he's gonna go with. Uh, but but I, I'm a fan. The stat line might not show it, but if you just watch the way he moved around the court, you can. You're gonna win more games with Nick Smith than you're gonna win, win without him. I tell well, you, you know, to see like Grant. W- Mikel has been in the starting lineup for what has it been now? Five, six games in a row. Right. And right. I mean, he's going to play. You know, he's going to play. He blocked what seven shots against them, rebounded well. But it's like you got Walsh coming off the bench. I think he's great in that role. I like the idea of a Mikel Mitchell uh, also doing the same thing. You know, to to get in there and bang a little bit because his brothers had some trouble staying on the court the last. And we got to keep them off the boards. We know they're gonna they're gonna uh, offensive rebound. Oh, they got twenty, I think, against Arkansas. Twenty four, yeah. They? And that's why I think he may start McHale tonight. But who, who knows? It'd be fun to see what they do. Yeah. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports, you'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost 
any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. Bet online, where the game starts.